The Feast of the Ascension is a funny one. It's an interesting one. It's where we commemorate that moment in Jesus' career where he decided to work from home. Ascending back up to heaven, ascending to the Father, it can have this kind of connotation of, all right, Jesus is done, he's leaving, he's kind of allowing us to fend for ourselves. In one of the worst case scenarios, we can take on a certain deist or watchmaker notion. God sets up the world, sits back, and then depersonally watches it do whatever it's going to do. That's not God. God is not a God of aloofness. God is not a God of distance. This doesn't make sense with the incarnation. Jesus becomes flesh, comes to dwell in us, with us. We're going to hear later in the preface of the Mass. The preface is that part, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. And then I think the church puts in this fail-safe, as it were. A little chunk of theology in the off chance that Father's homily was actually all about his summer vacation or something else and didn't really bring up Jesus. Then we at least we have a little bit of theology right here. It says, For the Lord, Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, remember Jesus in his person, is both fully God and fully man, thus making intercession. Judge of the world and Lord of hosts. Hosts would be an ancient uh, Hebrew understanding of myriads of angels, hundreds of thousands of angels. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state. Remember, he took it on. He died as a result of other people's sin and willingly handed himself over. But that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. He's going to prepare a place for us. He's going to show us where we ought to go. Sometimes I think if Jesus would have just set up shop in Jerusalem, he's already died, he can live forever, plus he's God, so he didn't really need to have died, he could just kind of rule everything from Jerusalem or Rome or any kind of city of his choosing. I think you and I humans would resent him just like we resent almost any earthly leader that sets up shop somewhere and has power. But that he ascends to heaven, beckons to where we are to go, teaches us how to have communion with one another, gives us grace, the promise of God, the advocate, so that you and I might be continually renewed, refreshed by his grace, then you and I are given power from on high as well to live a different sort of way. And thus you have in the gospel, Jesus writes, thus Jesus says, thus, is it is, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name, beginning, to all, beginning from Jerusalem and to all the nations. This repentance, a change of heart, a continual metanoia, change of heart, is salvific. It cleanses the world. It allows us to yearn for God evermore. We, receiving him in Holy Communion, have a foretaste of what is to come, a certain closeness with Jesus. But, O oh man when we see his glorified body and can give him a big old bear hug, that'll be awesome. That is something to look forward to. 
Behold, I am sending the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, to the apostles. And thus the apostles are to go forth and preach this good news. That salvation is meant for you and for me and for anyone who will listen to the good news. And thus, spanning century and continent, you and I are part of this continuous chain of love, of evangelization, that started from Jerusalem and went through the entirety of the world. Do we do it perfectly? Heck no. There has never been a halfway perfect priest, deacon, bishop, layman, anything. And an omnipotent God doesn't need that. God can enact his power, his desire for salvation, can draw you and myself up into his love. He knows what he's about. His ascension, entrusting the mission of the church to very failed men, to very failed communities, but to communities of love who will still keep trying. And here you and I are today, part of the plan of God. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The beauty of uh, the promise of Jesus that repentance... Uh, for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name, is some people think, oh my gosh, Father's going to mention sin. That's such, such negativity, such whatever it is. The beauty of repentance is we freely get to accept the love of Jesus. There's no, you need X amount of spiritual tickets to get the 500 ticket prize of heaven. There's no earning it. There's no being good enough for God. There's just saying, Lord, I've fallen short. And the beauty of it is the Lord takes that weakness, accepts that weakness, which is just a fact of life, and draws it to himself, meets us there in intimacy, strengthens us, renews us, and sends us forth to bring that good news of freedom, the freedom of the children of God, to others. That's the beauty of what we do here week in and week out. It's the beauty of the sacrament of confession. It's the beauty of community. It's the beauty of following Jesus. We owe a debt of gratitude to uh, the choir who has kept us going in our worship, even at a time without a uh, music director. And um, you guys have done a wonderful job, especially Dee Dee and Tony, who they've hit all the masses this weekend. So they had to hear my really cheesy joke at the beginning of the homily. And so in many ways, there's been a lot of wonderful people in this community who've really stepped up during this year of transition, this time of change. And so I would uh, commend to your prayers our staff uh, as we look for a new music director, uh, as we look for others uh, to do the work that the Lord has entrusted to us here. Uh, Pray that we may have union of heart with one another and follow the will of Jesus. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.